On this week's episode, we are going to look at how you can plan and execute a multi-mushroom dye, multi-color fiber project. We're also going to cover why you might want to think about using up your exhaust baths and what are some special things that mushroom dye fiber can do under UV light. All right, there is a tradition in the world of mushroom dyeing where you are going to eventually knit your own beanie made out of um, dyed yarn and or in Canada, as we call them, toques. And uh, I really wanted to uh, do one. And this is a reveal. Um, I've ordered a pattern from Shetland because um, I'm really hoping to get there next year and I want to wear my hat there. Um, and so I have, uh, when you order a pattern from um, different places, they may not come in as a PDF. It may actually come in old school. So I thought I would open up and have a look at what a traditional pattern for a beanie. <laughs> I'm, not even the, I'm not even that good of a knitter, so we're going to have to see. I can't remember how many colors I got. Oh, okay, it's like printed. Look at that, isn't that cute? Oh, here we go, the Baca. Traditional Fair Isle half cap pattern, large to fit ahead because my head is ginormous. It looks like there's one, two, so four colors. Oh my gosh, look at this. This reminds me of like a tablet woven pattern. I wonder if that's, that's the Norse coming through the lot of Norse uh, Viking, a Viking influence. Um, okay, double pointed needles, three millimeters and three stitch. Um, this is the where I ordered it from, the com. It came very quickly. Um, they have a few different patterns. So Now the second step in the process is going out and finding appropriate yarn for your project. That is something staff at a yarn shop are very good at doing. I chose a fingering weight called Cumbria for this project. Okay, you've got your yarn home. Now you're going to take the wool in one of those skeins and you're going to split it up into multiple smaller skeins for the colors. I tend to use two swifts to do this. It's important to think about each of the colors and that each of these skeins is large enough for your project. Now it comes time to selecting your mushrooms. Now the mushrooms you're going to want to choose are going to be dependent on the area, the part of the world that you're in, and the colors that you're aiming for. In this case, every mushroom in this video has its own separate video on my channel. So you are going to be able to dial in and hopefully find this mushroom or a similar mushroom in your area. I'm going to be using four separate mushrooms and I'm gonna cover them each in a second. Let's talk about color planning because color planning is going to determine how you mordant, we're gonna talk about mordanting yet, and then how you process your mushrooms. Now I wanted to do four colors because the pattern calls for four colors and I wanted to do a yellow, an olive green, which is from the same mushroom, we're gonna talk about that, and then I wanted to do a red and I wanted to do a purple. What's important though is to get the yellow and the green from the same mushroom means I had to mordant them differently. I'm going to talk about mordanting next, but that's important to note is to get the darker green from Dyer's Polypore, I needed to mordant with iron. And all the rest of them, I could just mordant with alum or aluminum potassium sulfate, as you typically would. Now, the first step towards getting your target colors is going to be to mordant your fiber. This is a step you do not need if you use modern or acid dyes. This is a step you're going to need to use for dyeing with a lot of mushrooms and most of the plants. And all this is is introducing your fiber to a dissolved metal, um, either aluminum or iron or another metal. Um, and doing that ahead of your dye allows your fiber to take up significantly more color and make it more light fast and more wash fast. So this is exactly what I'm doing. And in order to do this, as you saw earlier, I had a scale 
the amount of metal that you add is directly proportionate to the amount of dry weight of your fiber. In this case, three skeins are going to be treated with alum or aluminum potassium sulfate, and one skein is going to be pre-treated with iron or ferrous sulfate. Here I am crushing it up in a jar with hot water, which I will be adding to water and then adding my fiber and going ahead and heating for an hour. Now, if you want more information on this entire process, I go into it in a lot more depth in the video I did on acorn dyeing. But in general, the steps are going to be soak your fiber for about 20 minutes to an hour in just water, remove your fiber, add your dissolved mordant, we're going to add water to this, and then I'm going to put my fiber back in. Now, soaking it ahead of time simply allows that fiber to sink into the pot more evenly. Then after the hour is up, allow your fiber to cool. All right, I promised you a deeper in-depth discussion on the mushrooms that we're going to be using today. We're going to start with Phaeolus schweinitzii also known as Dyer's polypore. Now this is an incredibly versatile mushroom that not only will fluoresce beautifully under UV light, as I will show you later, but also can give you a wide range of colors. And much like mordanting, dyeing is all about weight. So the first thing you wanna do is weigh out the skein dry that you want to turn yellow. Now, whatever that weight is, let's say 25 grams or an ounce, after that, you are going to decide how much mushroom you're going to need, dried mushroom. In this case, you want about 50%, we'll call it 50% weight of fiber. That means for every, let's say, pound of fiber you use, you want half a pound of this mushroom. This is a really concentrated mushroom. Um, and so this is what I'm doing here. I'm weighing out that amount. Now there's another skein, which it was pre-mordanted with iron. That's the one I'm gonna put in that is going to go that olive green. That iron ahead of time will mean that it will go in olive green in the dye pot. I would weigh out that one as well. And it's the combined weight of those two skeins divided in half that is gonna give you the weight of the mushrooms you're gonna need for Dyer's polypore. Now, as always, when you're dying, you wanna chop up your dried mushrooms as finely as possible. This just increases surface area for better colors. Now, the next step is I use some, one of these paint bags. They're available at the paint store. And if you put these in the pot ahead of time, when you put in your mushrooms and heat them up for that hour before you add your fiber, um, it allows you to pull the bag and the mushrooms at the same time. Now on to our second mushroom of the day, which is Cordinarius smithii. There is a, a Cordinarius, I should say, is the largest genus of mushrooms in the world, I believe, but only a few of them are really good red dyers, and this is one of them. Now, with this mushroom, is a little bit different than the dyers polypore. You want a two-to-one ratio, which means you want twice as much weight of dried mushrooms as you do to fiber. Doing that will allow you to get a much better red. Now, the question is, how much do you weigh out? And that's specifically based on the skeins. Remember, we... Um, split up that one big skein we got at the yarn shop into different skeins. So you need to have selected the skein that is going to be red, double that weight, and that is the amount of mushrooms that you want to weigh out to get your red. Um, this again, the wool was pre-mordanted with alum, and these mushrooms are going to be weighed out and then chopped up. And as you can see, they are sort of a maroony color when they are dried, but they will dye red. And I have two different videos on my channel um, in terms of dyeing with them and making sure you are uh, getting the red that you're looking for. If you want to reduce that ratio, you'll definitely get down more into the oranges. But a two to one ratio... Um, should definitely uh, help you get on your way with the red. Um, it's a beautiful mushroom. It comes out in uh, October, November here on the west coast of North America. Um, and we find that sort of in 
damp, mossy depressions in coniferous and also mixed, uh, mixed forests. This is another mushroom you want to make sure that you're chopping up as finely as possible. And then here again, I'm making use of one of those paint gallon. This is the one gallon or four liter size. Again, you get it at the paint store. It's meant to filter paint through, but it makes dyeing so much simpler. You can reuse them. They're very inexpensive. I highly recommend. And here, what I'm doing is I'm going to be using the jar to dye in instead of a larger pot because I'm only doing one skein. There isn't a ton of mushrooms here. So it's almost using like a double boiler method where I have a pot. Um, I'm going to just put water into the jar and the water into the pot. And what this also does is if the pot does start to boil, um, it's something that you don't want with many, many dyes. You don't want to get to a rolling boil. Um, it really protects the temperature within the jar and keeps it at about 80 degrees Celsius, which is what we want. Now, let's talk about our third mushroom. This is called Blue Chanterelles uh, or Polyozelis Multiplex. Now, it used to be... Um, multiplex referred to a bunch of different species that have now been speciated out and a lot of them have anyway and I haven't gotten this down to the species level so I'm still referring to it as polyozelis multiplex this is a high elevation mushroom often found in association with yellow cedar it may or may not be in your area but again um, hopefully you can find something similar now with this one um, what we're going to do is the same weight ratio. That's a two to one dried mushroom to fiber ratio based on the weight of the fiber. And again, I weighed it out and then I chopped it up. Here it is chopped up. And I'm using the same system of the bag and the jar. Um, so we're going to put that. And because we have that jar, that sorry, that pot going already, what we can just do is add this jar into that pot and have both the red cordonarius and the blue chanterelles going at the same time, which is one of the advantages of using this jar um, and paint bag system that I have grown very fond of in terms of experimenting. As you can see, now we've got both colors going at the same time, but it's not taking up more space on the stove. And what we want to do is we want to simmer those for an hour. Now, as those are simmering, we have our fiber soaking. Again, this is just soaking in water so that when we are going to add the fiber in, it is just going to sink in really nicely. Now, let's go back to the dyer's polypore. In order for us to get bright golden tones on the yellow, we want to add some vinegar. So just uh, that's what I was doing there. And that is just for the dyer's polypore. Now, I decided to come back around to my blue chanterelle. Um, with the alum morden, I knew it was going to give me a gray, and I just thought maybe we could snazz up the gray a bit. So these, this mushroom here is our last mushroom that we're dying with, and we call this lobster mushroom or hypomyce hypomyces lactiflorum. There we go. And so this is a mushroom that's really interesting. It grows on the outside of another mushroom called a russula. This is just the skin. And so um, come mushroom time, we harvest them in mixed forests here, and then we shave off that orange. And what's interesting about it is it's pH sensitive. So if I just die with it as is and don't shift the pH, I'm going to get an orange. And then as I shift the pH higher, I'm going to get to a peach. And even higher, I'm going to get into the purples. So by combining the lobster mushroom with the blue chanterelle, which is exactly what I'm doing here, um, I'm hoping for a deep, dark, rich purple. So that's what I was aiming for in kind of an unusual way to get purple. So as you can see, this is the jar that had my blue chanterelle. And I thought, I'm going to pitch this in and get a little bit more color going just to see what happens. And I was super, super happy with the result. Um, I did end up getting a really lovely purple. So again, now with these mushrooms, um, I actually have two pots going at the same time. One big pot um, for the dyer's polypore. Then I have the... Um, red quartz and then this is the uh blue chanterelle with the lobster mushroom and because like i said the purple has to have a ph boost what you saw me adding was a 
quarter of a teaspoon of washing soda. We had pH of about 10 to 11. And I wasn't super happy with how dark this was going. So I ended in check, I ended up checking in more lobster just directly in. So here's a good example of what happens if you get impatient and don't use a bag is you just have your mushroom and your fiber all mixed together. And it does create a little bit of a tangle that has to be sorted out after the fiber is dry. Um, so I do recommend doing the using the bag, simmering that mushrooms for an hour, and then pulling the bag out, and then simmering your fiber. But here I was just really trying to get as much color as I possibly could out of the lobster mushroom. At this stage, I pulled the bags and I added the fiber and simmered it for an hour. And as you can see, the Dyer's Polypore with that little boost of vinegar has given me that gorgeous golden yellow tones that I was really hoping for. It is such a beautiful, rich yellow. Um, it's not even coming through just how yellow this is. Um, the other color, this is with the, uh, the mordant, uh, the iron mordant um, is again that olive green that I just love although with a lot of the plants you get much more of a brown but with mushrooms this mushroom you get that green and then here is my stunning red from the red cordinarius uh, looked great and here at the end is that purple from the lobster mushroom and the blue chanterelle just gave just pushed it into that deep rich purple color that stayed even after it dried it's just such a stunning shade. I'm so happy that it came out that well. And here we are. Here are the results. Red yarn from the Red Cordinarius. Yellow from the Dyer's Polypore with alum. Olive green from the Dyer's Polypore with Premortant with iron. And finally, we have the purple from a combination of Blue Chanterelle and Lobster Mushroom. So yay. Now we have our yarn. We are ready First of all, to take a well-earned cup of tea, and then we're going to get into the knitting. This step is very straightforward. Allow the yarn to dye. Use a swift if you have one, and wind your yarn into balls. Very, very straightforward. You can even up earn a chair if you don't have a swift. And now we're ready to knit. Okay. Now it's time to knit. This is my first ever Fair Isle knitting project, which just means that I'm going to be using multiple colors in the same row. I first tried to cast on cable, cable needles. It did not work very well. So I scrapped that and did double pointed needles, which I was much more used to for making antique sock patterns. I don't know if I had known quite how long this was going to take or the fact that I didn't gauge it quite right and it has become now a giant stocking of a hat if I would have done quite this pattern. Do I look like a fisherman? Mommy. Yes, baby. Can, I, can you help me get a bar? Yes. I can't say one thing. I thought I was always afraid to try the multicolor patterns because I figured you would have a whole bunch of ends to weave in. But if I invert this, you can see there's actually very few ends to knit in. And instead you get these floats behind the pattern as you, so in the end for this entire hat, there's probably about six ends that I'm gonna need to darn in. You do get a ridge of ends, of floats, but um, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And um, so th that part, I'm excited. I feel like I've kind of unlocked another style of knitting that I was kind of afraid to try. And now I'm not. Um, you can see a little bit more of those floats under. This is the rim of the hat, which is going to make the hat even bigger. You can see there's the ends to tie in. But in general, there's really not that bad. Okay, and now we are done. I um, It's still a little bit big, but I think it came out okay. I've got my tassel and I'm all set. So 
Guys, what do you think is going to happen? I think that's going to look like a really like pretty purpley thing. All right. Can we get the lights? Turn off the lights. Whoa. I was right. I can't tell. I can't. Oh, I, I, it like reflects the purple. Mm -hmm. That's, is the yellow really bright? Yeah, it's like red and then it turns into... Yeah. yeah what, color, what, what, what color does the red go? Purple. Purple. I wanted to take a minute to talk about exhaust baths. And you've gone through all the work of the dyeing of your project. And before you pour your dye vat, the remaining dye vat down the drain, I think you should take a minute and think about doing a few more rounds. And I wanted to show you, that's what I did with this project. After I was done dyeing for the hat, I wanted to show that there were some more options out there. So these colors, this is my drying rack, as you can see. I was thinking about setting up a more, you know, sexy and sophisticated setup, but the reality is natural dyeing involves having to dry fiber. And so this is what I've got set up. As you can see, it's for, <laughs> it's for socks, but I love it for hanging skeins as well. So uh, for the Dyer's Polypore, these yellows are from the Alum Mordanted, and then I've got the Iron Mordanted ones over here. As you can see, it goes into the olive greens. I'm not sure that's coming through. They're, they're quite olive green in person in the video. They kind of look okay. Um, after that, the ones back here, all of these oranges from the darker red straight through. This is all from the Cordinarius Smithy Eye. And as you can see, that red in that lower concentration goes quite peachy and quite orange. So I think using these all together in either a weaving or a dyeing uh, project is gonna go really well. I'm super excited about that. And finally, for the last one is the lobster mushroom. And I think this really shows the gradient that you can get. I got that really, really dark purple for the hat. And then I did the same thing. So this is, I put this one in. This is about 10 grams or about 20 meter wraps. This is another hour, let it cool. This is another one and then a third. So even though you would think you'd be all exhausted and used up, you still get that beautiful tri-color, that gradient color. So there you go. I wouldn't have gotten any of these colors if I hadn't leapt in and tried to use up the very last. So I often, for dyeing, have a few of these skeins pre-mordanted and ready to go in the kitchen so I can chuck them in after a project. But I wanted to show you. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I really hope that you learned something new and feel free to like and subscribe for future videos all on how you can forage and make your own natural dyes from plants, mushrooms, and lichens. Here are those orangey peach skeins used in a weaving project.